Coming up next, the network premiere of Pretty Woman, starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. Tracy, hurry up! It's coming on! I can't believe you haven't even seen this yet. It's just the best. It's this really old-fashioned movie about this girl that's kind of like Cinderella and this guy that's kind of like a prince, only in this movie, the guy is this really big corporate takeover artist and the girl is a hooker with a really bad wig, but nice. <laughs> and in the beginning of the movie, there's this really sad scene where they just won't let her shop in this boutique on Rodeo Drive. And then, towards the end of the movie, there's this really happy scene because they let her shop in the boutique. <laughs> Oh, you'll see it. You're gonna love it. Boy, I really need this movie tonight. Life's been too real lately. Uh -huh. I want some magic. Me too. Oh, here it is, here it is. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin from the President of the United States. Oh, no! I don't want to hear this! Wanted pretty woman! <laughs> you to do over 400 separate cardiovascular and toning exercises working more major muscle groups than cross-country skiing. Wow! <laughs> okay, uh, sit on the floor with your legs straight in front of you. I can do that. Okay. Place the band around both feet and pull back with your arms in a rolling motion, bringing the cardio band to your chest. <laughs> Trace him home. What are you doing? Working out. You got your new home fitness center? It's like a big rubber band. I know, but if it can do half of the 400 things it says it can do, it's worth the $12.95 I paid for it. Well, take a break, because I just got the latest issue of Single Woman Magazine, and there's a test in here that I definitely think we should take. Oh, okay. I think I've done enough for the first day. You know, I actually do feel firmer. So, uh, what's the test? It's Are You Starved for Love? Didn't we take that a couple of months ago in Cosmo? No, no, that was Are You Hungry for Love? This is a whole nother thing. This gives you warning signs and everything, and if you get three or more of them, then it means that you're intimately malnourished. These tests are so stupid. Why do I love them? Oh, you know, that's a great idea for an article. Well, why do intelligent women love stupid tests? Okay, shut up and let's take the stupid test. Okay. Here we go. Warning sign number one. You've seen the movie Pretty Woman more than three times and still don't question it. Oh, my God. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, I hope this isn't some kind of a joke test. <laughs> sign number two. You channel your frustration into impulse buying of trendy and even bizarre fashions. <laughs> Obviously, neither of us do that. <clears throat> Uh, sign number three. Uh, you've been desperately eating sweets to make up for the lack of a sweetie in your life. Well, I don't think I've been desperately eating sweets. I mean, okay, fine, I had a few M&Ms the other day, and the last one fell on the floor and rolled under the refrigerator, but I didn't get down on my stomach to get it. Good for you. <laughs> okay, sign number four. You buy a pet to make up for the lack of affection in your life. Oh, well, thank God we don't have any pets. 
pets. But we do have plants. They said pets. I'm okay, you're okay. <laughs> Hello, you two. Meet Jake. Jake, this is Melissa and Tracy, your other roommates. You bought a canary? And a new outfit. I had an irresistible urge. <gasps> oh, no, she's in the danger zone. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, well, Melissa and I were just taking this silly test in Single Woman magazine, and according to them, you may be intimately malnourished. <laughs> what does that mean, intimately malnourished? Well, it, it means that you're starved for love and affection. They give you all the warning signs in this magazine, and frankly, George, you could be a poster child. <laughs> but I don't feel starved for love and affection. Jake loves Mummy, don't you, Jake? <laughs> Georgie, sweetie, you're not Jake's mommy. Jake's mommy is probably back at the Woolworths. <laughs> Have you been feeling lonely lately? Well, no more so than usual. I mean, there are times when I really do miss Frederick. When you spend morning, noon, and night with the same man for 20 years and suddenly he's not there, you can't help but notice. Georgie, honey, I, I think that we should get you back into circulation. What do you mean? Well, I, I know this might be a difficult step for you to take, but have you given any thought to dating again? Oh, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. I haven't been on an actual date since I was 18. I mean, I wouldn't even know how to go about meeting someone. Oh, you can meet people anywhere. At a lecture, at the library, at a museum. Or if you want to meet a man, go to Schnookies. <laughs> Schnookies? Schnookies is that pickup bar full of desperate people. You say that like it's a negative thing. <laughs> I'll take you there tonight if you want to go. Oh, I wouldn't know how to act. I will show you how to act. <laughs> Tracy, will you come? Tracy hates singles bars. Well, that's because you go with this fantasy that you're going to meet a great guy, then you wind up on display competing with women who've had cardio bands for months. <laughs> it's depressing, degrading, and dehumanizing. So what time do you want to go? <laughs> We in luck. Not only is it Hawaiian short ribs night, but it's well drinks a half price for women under 45 with valid ID night. <laughs> is anyone else finding it difficult to breathe? Let's go and come back another time. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, you guys. We're three chicks on the prowl, whether you two like it or not. Besides, there's a lot of success stories here at Schnucky's. Oh, come on. Can you honestly tell me that anyone got into a healthy relationship meeting at a place like this? Do you remember Lana from Ready to Wear? Didn't she marry Howie from Small Appliances? Uh-huh. Well, she met Howie here. And they fell madly in love. And last I heard, she was six months pregnant. Isn't that Howie over there? Where? Talking to that blonde. Well, that's not Lana. That's Sylvia from Betting. <laughs> that pig. Oh, well, forget about Howie. You're not looking to get married anyway. You're just looking to get back into circulation, that's all. Let's go over to the short ribs table. That's where all the action is anyway. That's because everyone looks so attractive eating pork off a bone. <laughs> hey, George, I think that guy is staring at you. Oh, I think he's gonna come over here. Oh, dear. What should I do? I don't know how to behave. Just be yourself. Hi. I hope you won't think I'm being too forward, but I bet my friends over there that I could buy a drink for the prettiest girl in the place. Uh, I hope you won't make me walk away a loser. My name is Phil. Oh, uh, hello, Phil. And your name is? I'm Georgie. Hey there, Georgie girl. Uh. So, what brings you here tonight? Well, my friends thought it was time I got back into circulation. You see, I was married to a wonderful man for 20 years. He would everything a girl could wish for, considerate, loving, gentle. And then his spleen burst. <laughs> it was a terrible shock. I've been in mourning for the past 16 and three quarter months. And do you know there are times when I feel that I'll never really love again? Okay, Georgie girl. Uh, see ya. Bye, Phil. Well, he was nice. 
How did I do? You bummed him out. Oh. People don't want to talk about death in a bar. They come here to drink alcohol and forget about death. <laughs> Melissa has a point. As interesting as your past has been, and God knows I'm not tired of hearing about it, but you may not want to lead off with it. You know, talk about what's happening in your life today. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, there are two guys you can practice on. Who? Jerk and Francis, the two undercover security guards that work at the store. I flirt with them all the time, but it doesn't mean anything. They're coming over here. Dibs on Dirk. Hi! Excuse me, you're under arrest? I believe you stole my heart. Oh, and what's the penalty for that, officer? Handcuffs, body search. <laughs> no, no, no. I said, what's the penalty? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, aren't you going to introduce us to your co-conspirators? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Dirk. Francis, this is my friend Tracy and my friend Georgie. Ladies. Hello. Isn't she fun? <laughs> Why don't you two guys sit down? Tracy can scoot over. Or I could just move to another table. <laughs> well, I missed you guys coming around the counter today. Did you have a really busy day? We were working dressing room surveillance at uh, Lady Sportswear. Excuse me? Oh, they were working lady sportswear. <laughs> yeah, we were. Betty was sick. Somebody had to get up in that crawl space and peek at the vents. You mean you actually peek at women as they're changing? It's our job, ma'am. We don't enjoy it. We're like doctors. <laughs> you're awfully quiet. Either you're shy or you were shopping today in lady sportswear. Just as shy, yeah. And I was shopping today in lady sportswear. I can't help noticing you have an English accent. Where are you from? I'm from the Isle of Scilly. Oh, but that's all in the past, and we don't want to talk about the past tonight. We want to talk about the present. I brought a canary today. I named him Jake. Jake. <laughs> That's a weird name for a bird. Gee, I don't know, Dirk. I thought it was a pretty good name. <laughs> Jake was actually the name of my late husband's favorite hound. Oh, Frederick loved Jake so much, which was very ironic, as it was during a vigorous game of fetch with Jake that Frederick's spleen burst. Georgie! <laughs> Can't help it, Melissa. I know I'm not supposed to talk about the past, but everything keeps reminding me of Frederick. I'm just not ready for this. Oh, don't leave. No, do, and I'll go with you. No, I'd rather be alone. You stay and have fun with Dirk and Fran. This is your happy hour. I'm not happy. I'll see you back at home. Did she mean that she'd see all of us back home, Francis? <laughs> Sounds like an invitation to me, Dirk. Mistaken, you're from Scilly. Right. It's been a long time since I've met anyone who's even heard of Scilly. Um, would you like a ride? Oh, I don't think so. What fun is a ride in a hansom cab if you're alone? You ought to be alone. I was thinking of going with you. You're very kind, but I, I don't think so. You look sad. Are you all right? Not really, but you don't want to hear about my troubles. Bet you I've heard a lot worse. Come on, let me give you a ride. I can't afford a ride. It's a slow night. This one's on me. You look like you could use a lift. <laughs> OK. Yeah, this will keep you warm. Thank you. Let's go, Jake. 
Jake. They're gonna stay. So what? Well, we're just having a little fun. I didn't want to have fun. This night was supposed to be about Georgie. I knew I should have gone with her when she left. Oh, we can't keep protecting her like this, Tracy. We're not her parents. Why don't you just loosen up a little bit? How loose are you planning to get? <laughs> with Dirk and Francis, they're just friends. You've been flirting your head off with them all night. Now they're in our apartment. I think they're expecting a little bit more than friendship. Look, if I had to sleep with every guy I flirted with, I couldn't hold down a job. Well, if they know that, why are they squirting binaca in each other's mouth? Oh, no. Hey, you guys. You know that there isn't any sex tonight, right? Oh. Right. See, I told you. Well, good night, then. Oh, but you don't have to leave. We can still play some music, have some fun. Well... Thanks for letting us buy you all those drinks. <laughs> well, well, they're gone. You see, you cut to the chase and they're out the door. <laughs> oh, Georgie! Hi. You're back. Where have you been? You won't yeah. believe this. The most magical thing has happened. I met a man. All right! Where? On my way home from Schnookies. I was walking past the park and there he was just standing there. Like he was waiting for me. A man was waiting for you in the park? Oh, it's not what you think. He drives a handsome cab. We spent the whole time just talking and laughing. Well, actually, I talked and laughed. He just listened. It's been so long since anyone's paid me this much attention. Hmm. So are you planning on seeing this guy again? Well, hopefully. I haven't been this excited since I met Frederick. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> and I owe it all to you two. If you hadn't made me go out tonight, none of this would have happened. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to say I told you so, but maybe next time I suggest going to a place that's depressing, degrading, and dehumanizing, you won't be so quick to judge. <laughs> a nuisance of myself. Not at all. I wish my paying customers were as loyal. I brought you a surprise. Last night you were saying how difficult it is to get a decent cup of tea in New York. So I brewed you a pot and I bought you some real English biscuits. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Well, you seem to be in better spirits tonight. Oh, thanks to you. How do you take your tea? Uh, three sugars and a splash of milk. This is incredible. What is? That's exactly how Frederick took his tea. So does half of England. That's why we all have bad teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm serious. You remind me of him in so many ways. That's why I feel so comfortable with you. Can I ask you something? Of course. Do you believe that when a person dies, his spirit can watch over you? I've always been an ashes-to-ashes, dust-to-dust man myself. Thank you. I believe it. I'm not quite sure what to make of all this, Edward, but I feel like I've been drawn to you in a magical way. Really? Last night I was feeling so lost when you suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Um, this is rather embarrassing to admit, but I wasn't appearing out of nowhere. I was coming out of the bushes. <laughs> Well, anyway, you appeared and it seemed magical to me. But it's not just that. The minute I saw you, I felt like I knew you. And it's not just because you're English. You remind me so much of Frederick. I see. 
Not only do you look a bit like him, you sound like him, you take your tea the same way, you have a horse named Jake. Frederick had a horse named Jake? No, he had a hound named Jake. But you know, horse hound. Mystically, that's very close. Just out of curiosity, did Frederick have a small tattoo of Queen Victoria on his left shoulder? No, do you? No. Amazing, isn't it? Now you're pulling my leg. Oh, I'm sorry, Georgina. I just don't believe I'm as magical as you think I am. Well, all I know is Frederick looked after me for 20 years, and I think he's still looking after me. I think I'm here because he wanted me to be. Are we drinking the same tea? <laughs> Look, I'm sure it would be wonderful if this all meant something, but it doesn't, believe me. How can you be so sure? Because I've been around the block a time or two. I know these things. I think you want it to mean something. But that's just it. I didn't want this. The last thing in the world I was looking for was to meet somebody. I think meeting someone was exactly what you were looking for. But you felt guilty. So, I'm the safe choice. What have I got to feel guilty about? Absolutely nothing. You obviously loved Frederick very much. And if you're ready to get on with your life, you don't need his permission or mine or anyone else's. You're entitled, Georgina. So you don't think your whole reason for being is tied to me? Or is yours to me? Well, that doesn't mean we can't be friends. Excuse me. Are you for hire? Uh, yes, sir. Good night, milady. If you're ever feeling homesick, you know where to find me. Are you sure there isn't even a little magic? Just be happy, Sunshine. Sunshine? That's what Frederick always called me. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> 